Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of our wonderful Yosemite National Zoo, our Valley Zoo I should better say. Yeah, in today's episode we are starting off with the little playground from last episode, which unfortunately um, I did cut out of the video. It was my mistake, um, here's a little explanation what I did and um, I, I basically, whenever I have recorded my stuff, I will pull that back onto my SSD and I will rename uh, the files so that I have, you know, it will be then, for example, this is episode number, I guess it's 8 or 9 or 10 or whatever, but anyways, the episode number and then underscore and uh, a normal um, numbering for how many people pieces I have because I usually don't have a recording which is only one file. It's multiple files to make sure that I don't lose too much if one of those is broken. Now um, I do do this because I have a kind of automatic um, system in Adobe Premiere which then takes those files from the folder which is on the SSD and automatically creates this, um, you know, the files inside of Premiere Pro so it automatically takes them into my project. Now the numbers I have in there are you know, set in there to be naming it in a way that it is chronologically fine. You know, the, the thing is, what I want to do is I want to make sure that every single um, piece of the time lapse obviously is in chronologic order. What I did is I just renamed one of the files with the same number at the end, which um, led to the fact that the Premiere was confused and uh, took the same file twice instead of just using the second one. And uh, yeah, so that was my bet, and this is why you saw me doing the rock work twice. I mean, who doesn't like rock work, right? Anyways, then there's another thing, and I have to quickly say that, man, I am so happy. There was one wonderful person in my comments. Like, last episode, I talked a lot about my pronunciation stuff, and um, I'll I do say, by the way, I... I feel totally fine, you know, guys, um, I appreciate all the wonderful feedback you guys gave me, but it was just purely informative. I uh, didn't want to kind of brag for uh, any kind of attention or whatever. It's just I I do know that I have these issues and I know how to tackle them and that's totally fine. I just wanted to let you know what the issue is. However, there was one wonderful person and uh, this person is called, let me just quickly check again, Rich Lidstrom, or Lidstrom, um, and he actually told me, let let me just quickly read that comment out and hopefully um, you will already be able to um, hear that in today's episode. He says, Hi Rudy, as for the piece sound on the mic, do you speak across the mic or at an angle or directly into the mic? When I worked in radio, we were taught to have the mic off to the sides of your face but a hands width away from your mouth. Um, point the mic across your speaking path. The mic will still pick up your voice perfectly but the air from popping piece won't hit the mic. And as far as I've tested in advance to this episode, or prior to this episode, I should say, it actually worked out pretty well. It's, you know, still not a, it's still not a thousand euros microphone I do have, but it actually improves the way um, I, can, I can speak and I can do whatever I want and it still picks up the voice and stuff perfectly fine. So actually, if um, this is true, please let me know in the comments down below if it is true for you as well. Um, and also, one thing I wanted to ask you anyways, how are you listening to my episode? Are you using headphones? Are you listening to it on your phone? Are you listening it to it via speakers, because actually for me this is quite imp uh, important in terms of how I process the sound. Until now I just did the normal sound um, which I have recorded with the thing, but I can still do it also stereo or um, kind of monotone or left-right angle, whatever you want to uh, prefer, but you know if like 80% uh, of the people say they listen with headphones, I can actually go the way and do it full stereo uh, and potentially that would improve um, the sound even more without anything regarding to the microphone. So just for me as an information, uh, do you guys listen to it more with uh, your headphones or via speakers? Uh, whether your phone or in your room, it, well, it does make a difference, but you know, just for me as an information. Now, yeah, you can see I'm tackling the slide and the slide went uh, through actually a few design iterations. Now, um, my, okay, it's... I feel like at the moment it's quite hard to find the right things to use in the game because I I think there are so many absolutely great pieces but you are already or actually I am already noticing the lack of pieces in comparison to Planet Coaster and that is not 
at all a criticism towards Planet Zoo because it is the base game. You know, if I turn everything off in terms of uh, TMTK and uh, DLCs and updates on Planet Coaster and I only take the in-game pieces from the, the raw game, it would be even worse than what, uh, you know, Planet Zoo is offering already. So it is still a very good toolbox we have at hand, but it's not as versatile and it's not as kind of... Um, uh, filled with wonderful variants of, of pieces uh, that you are also so aware of that they exist. So at the moment it's kind of a combination out of there are not as many pieces obviously as in Planet Coaster but also there are I don't know where these pieces are exactly, you know. In Planet Coaster, you could wake me up at 3am uh, in the morning and I could literally find the piece you need for a certain task within a minute. Uh, that would be no issue. And the minute is actually coming from basically 59 seconds of booting the computer in Planet Coaster and the one second would be finding that piece. So <laughs> it is that easy. Now, I'm learning, I'm learning and I'm getting better and better here in uh, Planet Zoo, but that also means I'm going through a lot more design iterations that I, than I usually do. Do. And yeah, since I cut this off last uh, episode completely, I thought, okay, you know what, if this was about last episode, I would have cut out the first, you know, iteration of the, the slide. But this time I thought, just let's let's see, you guys uh, shall see the whole process and, and see how many times I change it. I change the angles, I change everything about it. And yeah, you can actually see how long I did take, uh, it did take me to, to build uh, in that area over here. It's, it's just like really a little bit uh, finicky and yeah, I was testing a few of the physics now. Well, with the sped up game, it doesn't really make that much sense, but it was uh, fun playing around and also, I don't know if you guys have uh, spotted that, but I used, um, I always use like a staff member to measure uh, the stuff I build. So that's why the mechanic was actually placed uh, there half of the episode. So I was also testing if the ball is um, kind of uh, effective by water which it isn't but uh, it was just a little test now yeah I was also placing uh, some of the animal toys here which I found interesting because uh, I already told that in the last episode uh, quite often in zoos um, they use the the kind of same pieces for the kid playgrounds as well just to see how the kids perform so I always found that a funny thing and I always uh, felt very bad that I was slower than a gorilla or a chimpanzee in, in getting getting these little treats out of these boxes so they always like felt very bad anyways I then went into the dark path of um, yeah covering up the picnic benches and let me just tell you if you ever have this idea just don't <laughs> it's just it was so nasty to do that like not even like the the one the, the first time theming it like I'm doing right here is totally fine but then copying it over and fitting it in into the actually the very perfect position so that nothing really blends through Oh my god, that was like really an issue. You can see I, I was using quite a few pieces here to make sure that I don't really cover up too much, but also at the other hand, I wanted to cover it up all. So yeah, it, it kind of uh, was a little bit of a struggle here, but you know, I'm not complaining. It was really great to build it. Like it was really, really a cool thing, a cool experience this time to to cover up also these picnic benches because um, it, it changes the, the looks of it so much. And that's again, something I, uh, yeah, I, I did know obviously from, from Planet Coaster that there is so much that we can flexi color and recolor, but we cannot do this right here in Planet Zoo. And that's why I made these cover ups, which we did also at the beginning of Planet uh, Coaster as well. Now, at the end, where everything was kind of recallable and stuff, um, it was not necessary to do it all the time. Uh, but yeah, that's definitely one of the things that I'm looking forward to in the future, that we do have a lot more versatile things, a lot more flexi color things, so we don't need to do like a cover up for everything. However, we are now in the part which is actually the name giver and also the main focus of today's episode because as always promised on the weekends there is animal time and animal time means there is a new habitat to be installed and today's habitat is actually the beginning of three habitats and now for those of you who have been in the Wednesday live stream they know what's going on but we had a long like before I started recording I think half an hour went into brainstorming which animals we want to have here and which would fit the zoo and which would, would fit kind of the idea about the zoo and which would then actually also eventually fit this area of the zoo. Now we decided to go for on the one side which is closer to the rock face of um, this uh, entrance area 
And um, that will be the artwork, artwork, <laughs> the artwork um, habitat. While uh, whilst um, on this side over here, where you can see I'm still struggling with the pathing as always, um, there will be the tortoise uh, habitat. But not just one, but two. So it will be on the one hand side is the Galapagos uh, tortoise, and the other hand side will be the Aldabra tortoise. So I am planning to do a little bit of a, well, let's say. Um, split habitat so it, it will be a tad bit different though from each other so I won't make it one habitat. I know that they go together but I wanted to separate them and I will then potentially connect them in a little uh, yeah I think it's a little bit of a house or a, a small house at least where they can go in and, and have their lettuce and whatever <laughs> so just yeah anyways but then there was this one thing and this is this is something uh, it took me a long time until I figured that it is not working at all. So I wanted to do a little pool for the um, Galapagos tortoise. So by pool, I don't mean anything to swim. You can see that I, I will be using the concrete floor to really create this just just a little puddle. The only reason why I was using these habitat gates over here, um, or the barriers I should say, is mainly because I wanted to get the, uh, the water to a certain level that is very much like really seamlessly integrated into that area so that the like if you do it with a with a little um with the river tool or with the water tool in the terrain you will always have this subtle little incline that goes into the water you can make it as steep as possible but it still won't look that good and i wanted to have this very 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 steep sharp edge where the water starts and this is why i use this um piece over here like the little barrier and what i figured then in the end is obviously that i had some issues between um like in in my thoughts let's put it that way um, that was totally fine because the tortoise can still walk through without getting drawn or without drowning, I should say, because, it, well, there is nothing to draw on. Um, it, there is enough space for the tortoise to, to go through because it's just ever so subtle. It's like two centimeters of depth or whatever. So it's totally fine, I, I thought. But the game, the game treats them as living animals that are not able to swim at all and not even go into water at all. That means even though it would be perfectly fine for the tortoises to just walk through here through the water, they just don't do it, which is really a pity because I thought that would be a cool thing to have. Um, but yeah, they just don't do. So uh, it's, yeah, it will be transformed into something else in this episode, I can tell you already. But it was a bit of a pity because I was actually feeling that this could be a cool thing. As you can see, I also used the mulch to uh, create a bit of a, a bit more of a soil area around, which um, I wanted to create and the rest of the habitat will be mainly w filled with sand. Yeah, I was then doing the fencing, which, you know, is just there as an information for me. The most, like the biggest part of this habitat will be in the end um, done with like a natural borders and it, it kind of looks good. I am pretty happy with how it turns out to be looking at the end of this episode, which is only halfway through because we are only done with the first habitat, like not even completely done with that one, but at least we have, we have basically set the foundation and this is always what takes the most time um, it is always the planning and finding the right uh, locations and finding the right viewpoints and finding the right angles at which you want to look at finding the right inclines and um, yeah also finding obviously the right way of uh, making the habitat suitable for the animals like okay we do have now the new update so that animals are always fine and uh, you know welfare is basically locked to 100 percent in sandbox mode which is good, but at the end of the day, also this might be something I want to address. Uh, at the end of the day, I still want to make this zoo uh, workable. Like that, this, it should be a zoo. And here you can see they do go into the water pretty much only on the sides, but then they just move out. And you can see here we go. They basically can just go in ever so slightly, but they just cannot traverse through it, which which was really odd, indeed. And um, yeah, I was just painting a little bit of the terrain then. Um, yeah, obviously uh, the, the tortoises do like a lot of sand. Um, and yeah, as you can see, there is still a lot where they can potentially break out, which, you know, will take a time until they do. But <laughs> um, yeah, we still want to make sure that this habitat at the end is nice. So interestingly, obviously the giant Galapagos tortoise is not a tortoise that would live in uh, this area of Yosemite National Zoo. Um, or Yosemite Valley Zoo. God, I'm mixing up the names here. Mm. The, the reason 
I, you know, I don't want to make the zoo like basically a zoo where only animals are living that are in this area, like suitable. I wanted to make sure that the natural habitats that are looking like really the as if this would be the Yosemite Valley area. These animals need to be somewhat kind of local, but the other animals, like the Galapagos tortoise, for example, right now, they obviously get a habitat which is um, uh, somewhat suited to their needs. And I still wanted to make sure that this is fitted into the Yosemite Valley look. Now, this was pretty much a, a huge struggle uh, because you cannot just slap some palm trees in the middle here and, and make it kind of look like, um, you know, the, the natural habitat of the tortoise. That just that doesn't work uh, because at the end of the day uh, it, it would be totally ridiculous because the temperature would not be there the weather would not be uh, suitable for for the plants and stuff you put in so you do have to take that into account how a zoo would need to tackle uh, these kind of challenges by yeah creating a habitat that is still suitable with some kind of local foliage um, yet making making it a good habitat also in terms of temperature uh, for the tortoises so yeah what we are going to do you will see at the end of this episode I'm going to build also like a, um, a little pavilion where there is a heater below and there are some more tropical plants located and um, and the rest of the habitat will also get some heaters, obviously, um, but then we still do have a lot of the local foliage, as you can see. And yeah, the, pl the, the placement of, of all these things is um, pretty weird because it, it, this time I really needed to figure exactly where I wanted to put stuff. Here you can see, by the way, I moved... I moved the concrete piece as, as much as I could, but it still didn't work. I tried to, to build like a ramp in here. I was still not really sure how this would work. And I thought, okay, maybe it's just this piece, but nope, not this piece actually. So yeah, at the end of the day, I was like, okay, you know what? Let's get rid of it and uh, change it completely because um, yeah, this will be the area where we have the heater then eventually. And it was a nice, a nice try, but it, it just seems to not work. And here you can see it does work. I was just testing a little bit. But yeah, back to the placement of foliage. Um, it's pretty important to maintain some kind of uh, interesting sidelines in general. And especially with this little habitat over here, I had a huge struggle to find the right locations for viewing angles for the guests. Because obviously I wanted to give the animals a lot of uh, privacy still. Um, but I also wanted to make sure that the people can see the animals. Because like tortoises are not the fastest animals on this planet. That means they would also potentially not move enough in a habitat that you have an easy, easy go on spotting them because they're moving around. So you somehow have to ensure that there are multiple angles in, at which you can or which you can use to um, spot the animals in here without actually annoying them too much and also without actually having to, to, to walk like a 500 miles or whatever. So uh, this was kind of a little, a little struggle here I had and then I, I was just testing various uh, roof designs here because again I didn't want to create something that does look like too tropical um, I, I tried something with the thatch roof but I, I ended up not using it because I was not too happy with it so yeah you can definitely tell now from from what you can see that I went with a way more Yosemite like uh, style which I feel like is also what we need to go to we, we won't potentially go with this style for the whole time because at some point I do want to make some really themed habitats which still do fit into the whole context of the zoo but I don't want to take it too seriously. Here you can see by the way I am, I'm putting in the heater just to make sure that this area below here is heated as well because we will also use this zoo in snowy times as well. I do want to make sure how this looks also in rain and then the tortoises will be complaining a lot about the temperature quite quickly so that's why I'm definitely uh, building that as well. Uh, it's kind of a mixed mesh, I know. Now, with all the new sandbox uh, options, I would not even need to look into that. But, you know, realistically, and I want to make, as I said, this zoo later on as a proper zoo to be shared that people can actually play in and use it and experience it. I don't want to have like a million uh, messages that everything is going wrong or whatever. So I want to make this zoo somehow a, a, a running one you know a working one that would be pretty much cool indeed we do have our you know creative outlets for example like with the fairy tale book or with the planet of the ape habitats which uh, still uh, provides enough free freedom in, in creativity uh, where I can build whatever I want without actually having to look too much into realism and stuff but not for this though not for this one uh, I definitely want to look into it a bit more from the more realism uh, oriented uh, kind of uh, 
perspective. You know, that's that's what I want. Yeah, as I, as I said, um, the placement of trees, uh, especially over here, was super important. You can see me even rotating the tree uh, once I found the right position, just to make sure that also the branches and stuff don't block the view or do block the view. At some points, I do want it to block the view eventually um, to make sure that you still have something to discover and you do not see everything. So yeah, I was actually doing quite a lot to make sure that this looks good. Now, with this bridge over here, I found it a bit of a struggle to find the right uh, the right style, but at the end of the day I went with a very simple one indeed. Like it, the, the bridge itself is very simple, but it looks actually pretty good. I was a bit confused that this works, but also sometimes this is good to you just, just use the opportunity to save some pieces. And this time I did so because I loved actually the, the wooden texture over here is good, the shape was good, um, the railing is okay, I don't need to spend too much into the railing. I just wanted to give it a bit more uh, structure by putting down uh, some more supports and, and just giving giving it here and there a bit more uh, to look at, you know, just to make it look ever so slightly more finished. I think that's basically it. I wanted to make it like just like look more finished. That's it. And I had some some issues with like uh, selecting the pieces, but it, this also helped me to not come into the problem or problematic area that I would need to make like a bendy design. So yeah. Anyways, guys, that's it. Uh, for today's episode. Unfortunately today I do not have any uh, cinematics for you, but I will include some screenshots. Uh, cinematics is for a good reason because I am not happy with every angle at the moment, so once I am I will do the cinematics for the next episode. Maybe there will be one more episode this week because, you know, there is still so much to do in that area, but who knows. Uh, if not, you will find the next one on Wednesday, which will be focusing a bit more on backstage again. However, have a great Saturday and see you next time. Bye guys. Alrighty guys, thank you for watching this video, I really do appreciate that. As always, uh, make sure to check out also my social media channels, you can find me everywhere under at RudyRandCamel. Also big thanks to the crew, uh, you can see it on the left hand side right now. And as always, if you want to see more, you click that card on the top right. And if you want to stick around because you like the stuff you've just saw, you just saw, whatever, you know what I mean, just uh, click that sub button which is to the bottom right of the screen right now. But everything else I can say is have a great time and see you next time. Bye guys.